a few videos back, I mentioned just in passing that I was working on this thing, but I didn't really explain what it was. Um, so I am hoping to start tinkering on kind of remote control vehicle slash basic, like really, really basic robotic kind of things. So the first thing I decided that I probably needed is some kind of a base, uh, motion plat base platform thing. Um, basically something rigid with wheels on it that can carry an Arduino around and do stuff. So this is that. Um, one thing that I found that seemed like it would be reasonable that could hold stuff and I could mount stuff on is this old VHS case. So I grabbed a couple of these uh, gearhead motors, um, just you know, toy motors. I can't remember exactly what they're called. They're they're all over eBay though. Um, and I bolted them on there. Nothing fancy. And then to uh, make it move. I hooked up a motor driver, just a standard little H-Bridge motor driver module, um, and an Arduino Nano, and threw a little bit of code at them just to experiment with making it move. So my first bit of code that I wrote, which, okay, back up a little bit here. Mounting the wheels on there took you know, negligible amounts of time. Hooking this up, negligible amounts of time. At the speed I code, it took an evening to get a little bit of code figured out to just spin the wheels and make uh, and prove that I could control them. So what it's doing is it's ramping up the speed in one direction, ramping up the speed in the other direction. Over here doing the same thing, ramping up the speed but slower and then in reverse. And it's just going to repeat that. Yay, that's cool. That's simple. Yeah, it took me a long time to figure it out. The only hard part I had in hardware, let's stop him so he's not making noise, was I had to add this little capacitor. It's a 220 microfarad capacitor. Um, that was just one that was conveniently located. I didn't do any math or anything. And that's across the uh, VCC and ground, the five volts and ground where it goes from the Arduino to here, because these motors were making all kinds of gross noise and causing this thing to occasionally hang up and or reset. That's bad. So that smooths it out, cleans it up. I haven't had any problems with that since. Uh, for now, I'm just using an Arduino Nano with one of these uh, pin breakout board things. I can't remember what they call them. Some kind of a prototyping board or something or other. Um, sensor board, that's what they call. And just because it gives me the pins broken out easily, that's all. And it lets me put in power more than just the USB 5 volts. Because it's got, underneath here, it's got, uh, you can't really see, oh, let's pull this out. No. <clears throat> Let me show you on a different one. Do I have a different one of those? Well, this is close enough. It's not exactly the same, but it's got a similar arrangement. Uh, underneath there, it's got its own little 5 volt regulator. Um, and so does this one here. And it's a oh, smoothing capacitor and everything. Huh. Why don't I have more of those? I need to order more of those. They're super handy. Anyway, where was I? Right. I've got 7 and a bit volts coming in from my power supply. And when this thing's running... Um, at full speed with one motor, it's about 200 and some milliamps. This one will show it a little bit better when it gets up to speed. 250 milliamps. So 500 milliamps when both of those are running. And whatever else I get up to. That's just, I didn't want to overload my USB power. That's all. Uh, so I've got that. I've proven to myself that I can make the motors do different things uh, under program control, which for me... And my programming skill, that's a milestone. Let me show you the horrendous code that I made to do that. Okay, here's what I've come up with for my first experiment on my little VHS robot. Um, as you can see, I freely admit that I've stolen a lot of this uh, from the LED fade example. Um, and then just sort of added scabby code on top of it. 
Um, so, uh, first of all, initially is a variable to identify the four PWM outputs uh, that are going to the motor drivers. Motor one forward is pin three, motor one reverse is five, uh, motor two forward is six, and motor two reverse is nine. And then in setup, I send them all a 255. So, uh, full uh, PWM, 100% duty cycle is interpreted by this particular motor driver board as zero speed and as, uh, PWM zero, zero percentage is defined by it as full speed. It's upside down to normal thinking. It took me a while to figure that out. But anyway, that's just the way it is. Other motor drivers may be differently. Uh, I also may be using this one wrong, but that's what makes it work. So I'm going with that. So then in the loop, there's just a bunch of these repeated over and over again. Um, so motor one forward, ramp the speed up. And yeah, this this part here is straight out of the fade example sketch. This sketch right here, the fade example sketch. All it does is it PWM fades an LED up and down, right? You can look that up in your own Arduino IDE, but it's, it's pretty basic, but I don't know if I would have come up with that at my level of coding skill. So it's it's doing a PWM right. I'm doing a PWM right. It's changing the value. That's what I wanted. Okay. No, if the fade value is greater than or equal to zero, then subtract five, I think. And then analog right that to the forward. Slow it down a little bit so that the acceleration is a little bit slower and repeat. When you drop out of that, basically 200, zero to 255 in five in steps of five, we wait for a, a part of a second and then we ramp it back down again. And then I had a little bit of trouble early on. I may not need this anymore, but I put this in here anyways. So after it's faded up and or ramped speed up and ramped speed down, I just set it to its stop value um, and then wait and then go to the other wheel and do the same thing. Uh, no, that's not right. Then we wait 100 milliseconds, and then we ramp the speed up in reverse. Exactly the same thing, and we ramp the speed down in reverse. Exactly the same thing. And then we tell it to stop and wait, and then we go to motor 2 and do exactly the same thing. These sections are literally copy and paste and then just modified. So nothing to that once you figure it out. That uh, that gave me a little bit of confidence, even though it took a long time to figure out and I made a lot of mistakes. So then the next thing that I've come up with on another night uh, is to add these two joysticks to a couple of analog inputs. Um, I've got them on analog zero and two, uh, just the vertical uh, up and down. I haven't got the side to side connected yet which is why I left the, uh, the odd numbered ones not used. I thought I might need those at some point. So I just reserved them. I know. How often do you think about the future? Uh, so what this does, let's just turn the power on there is one joystick operates each wheel and just drives it proportionally in speed forward and reverse. So this one, I'm not sure which, okay, that's that. This one is on analog zero and it's this wheel. So if I slowly inch it forward, I can control the speed with PWM using the analog input here, both forward and reverse. And that way I can get them both going simultaneously. And that draws about 450 milliamps or thereabouts. Um, and that's just taking the previous bit of code and building onto it. This took like two minutes to add those and probably another evening plus for me to wrap my brain around the code because all of a sudden I'm not basing it off somebody else's code. 
I'm doing this myself. Uh, so let's go and take a look at that abortion of codeness. So here is the joystick modified version. So I defined a couple of joysticks. Um, I create value variables for them and just set that to the middle of the range. The analog inputs uh, range uh, from straight off the ADC from 0 to 10, 12. Uh, so I just pick that right in the middle um, just so that nothing weird happens. And I start, I created before I wasn't using PWM variables. Now I am. So I've created some variables and initialized them to start at, uh, at full stop speed, define the motor drivers. That's the same as before, uh, do an analog, right? Actually in the setup, that's no longer necessary because I've already initialized in there. So this is redundant down here. And I did a lot of troubleshooting. So I created a, a serial monitor. So in the loop, uh, read the two joysticks. Um, that's just a note to myself there. So if joystick one's value is below 450, which is the one inch of the dead band, then we'll map its actual value um, to between 450 and zero, which is what it's going to be if it's below 450 map that to range between 255 and zero, which is the, uh, the PWM. So I could have done that with math just to ratio it, but, um, in Arduino world, this map function exists. So I'm going to use it because it's lazy and I don't have to do more math. Um, so if, uh, jo the joystick one value is not lower than 450, We'll set the PWM for no, motor one forward to stop. Um, then we'll read joystick two and look for the same below. And again, the same thing there. Um, and then based off that same joystick read, if the joystick's actually above 530, then we'll map its value, which in 530 is the other side of the dead band. We'll map its value uh, out and 530 to 1023 is what it's going to be somewhere in that range. I'll map that from 255 to, to zero from anywhere from stop to start. And if it isn't that, yeah, uh, yeah. And then fall through there. Um, and then the same thing with joystick two and fall through to the 255. Um, because if it's not, uh, any of these, it's going to fall through anyway, and it's not going to change those values. So once we get through all that, that took a lot of head scratching and a lot of trial and error and error and error and error, um, which is why I was printing them all out. I wasn't even doing the analog rights for a while. I had those commented out and I was just printing them out to a serial monitor just to see what the hell's going on. Uh, anyway, uh, once we fall through all those, then all four of our PWM val should have a value. Um, but two of, well, if, if any of the joysticks are moved, then those are going to have this. So if both joysticks are moved, then two of these are going to be default 255 and two of them are going to be whatever they're set to. So you just write all four of those and then hit the bottom of the loop and go back up to the top. I'm sure there's more elegant ways of doing it. And if this gets too messy and out of control, I may throw it at my teenager um, and get him to, uh, clean it up for me. But, uh, in the meantime, that's what I've got. So that's as far as I've gotten on this thing. Yeah. It's not that impressive yet. This is going to be an ongoing project. It'll pop up every few months and I'll have done more stuff to it. The next things that I think I want to do to it is move these joysticks to another Arduino and hook up a pair of these NRF modules in between the two of them. So I'm going to have to cut. I'm not sure where I'm going to divide the code, actually, whether I'm going to just send the raw joystick num values over the air and then have this one keep figuring it out. Or am I going to do the math on the transmitter side and just send the PWM values across? Not sure yet. I'm, I'm more inclined to just send the raw 
uh, joystick values across and then let the one on the, on the board on here, it, it can be mobile by that point, right? You know, Cause there won't be any, any, uh, loose wires. I can just throw five volts into this thing and make it go. So I'm not sure which one of those I'm going to do, uh, but I'm still, so I'm still a little shaky on the NRF. You remember several months ago when I was tinkering with the NRF modules, um, I forgot most of what I learned then, but I've still got my, uh, my scraps of code that I created for that. And I think I've still got the links to the references. So hopefully I can, uh, work off of those. In the meantime, I, uh, hope somebody found this interesting. Um, maybe inspired you to wander way out of your comfort zone into either hardware or code, whichever one is not your comfort zone. Um, comments, etc. down below as usual, go for it. I like to hear what you guys are thinking after watching these things. Um, if you're a real coder, um, yeah, I know my code sucks. Um, a large part of the point of this exercise is me figuring out myself. Cause I, mean, I could just go upstairs into my uh, teenager's cave and throw it at him and say, Hey, code this. And he'd be back in five minutes but I wouldn't have learned anything. So if you've got some references you want to point me at that would help me learn, great. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, I, uh, I think that's everything for today. Um, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.